you ever finish canoe trips where you're thinking, man, I thought I was gonna catch a lot more fish than that. I think we've all had that feeling, but there's one tactic that very reliably at least doubles the number of fish that I catch on any trip, if not triples, or sometimes most of the fish I catch on a trip are using this method. It's very easy to do and doesn't require much fishing experience or knowledge. That thing is trolling using a good rod holder. Now a lot of people who fish on their canoe trips would say, yeah, f trolling, of course I troll. I grab my rod and I jam it under my leg and it gets in the way of my paddle stroke constantly, but yeah, I troll. Aside from that setup usually being awkward and cumbersome, oftentimes the rod is pointed directly backward. This takes the rod out of the equation when you hook up and then the fish is pulling directly on your rule, on your reel, on the drag, and that's not how you want to get a hook set on a fish. The rod does a much better job of that. It's designed for it. It will bend back and just cushion that hit and set the hook nicely for you. This is not designed to do that. If trolling feels clunky or inefficient, then it's not something you're gonna to wanna to do. With a rod holder, my line is in the water almost all day as I'm paddling, unless conditions are really bad or if it's too shallow or too weedy perhaps, but even then, usually I can find ways to do it. But having, it's a numbers game, you know? The more your line's in the water, the more you're gonna get hit, it's simple. You can just set it and forget it. And one really important thing about trolling is that it's keeping your lure in the strike zone for a much longer time than cast and retrieve. Cast and retrieve, if I've cast it out, I'm pulling back, my lure dives, it achieves whatever depth, diving depth I'm trying to get to based on the fish and season. And then I'm pulling it up, out of that strike zone, out of that target depth. So trolling, if I cast this out and it's pulling behind the boat, it's maintaining a certain depth, whatever depth I want based on the, on the crankbait that I choose. And that is huge. Staying in that strike zone where fish are going to be, massive. If you troll using a deep diving crankbait, a three-way swivel rig, a dipsy diver, something like that that gets you down deeper and keeps you deeper, then you can get around the thermocline as well, which can be really important in summer. Thermocline is that thin layer of water where the temperature changes rapidly. I used to get into three-way swivel rigs and even the mini dipsy diver, but now I just find them too cumbersome in the canoe, going between lake to lake, portage to portage. I don't want to be packing up too much stuff. So to achieve depth, I just use different crankbaits. Some shallow ones here. You can even troll top water. I don't think it's gets a lot of use, but uh, if you're going over submerged weeds, this is a great tactic. This lure floats, but has a great swimming action in the water. And then, generally, if you're not familiar with, with crankbaits, the, the larger the lip on it, the deeper it'll dive. So I've got some mid-depth ones here, a little bit deeper, and then some even deeper ones here. A lot of these, some of these can dive 20 feet, and that's, that's usually enough for my purposes. One thing to consider with a deep diving crankbait, if you're trolling it, it can actually create a fair amount of drag, especially if you're, you're paddling solo or into a headwind. That's not a good time to use a, a deep diving crankbait. I love using a deep diving crankbait when I have a little tailwind. It actually slow me down a little and it's kind of perfect. So pick and choose your times. With trolling, you also give fish a lot more time to commit. Some fish will want to follow for a long time before they commit to a lure. Some will attack it right away, but by trolling you give either fish in either mood the opportunity to hit your lure. And compared to the jam under your leg approach, having a rod holder up here allows you to keep an eye on the tip of the rod, which is good for weeds. If you picked up a weed, you'll see your rod bend back gently and you'll be able to detect it real and clear the, the weed immediately. But also if you're getting nipped, you'll see the rod tip dancing and that's gonna, you know, be a prompt to keep an eye on the rod, be ready to pick it up. So that's really helpful. The canoe is a great vessel for trolling because it inherently has changes in speed and direction. If I'm paddling, even with J strokes, keeping a relatively straight course, there's still some weaves and changes in speed as well. Just from fatigue, you know, unless you paddle like a, a robot, like constant, at a constant speed, then you're gonna have those changes. Those changes in speed and direction can really trigger fish. So often if I'm just out for the sake of fishing in the canoe, if I'm not trying to cover distance. I'll actually paddle on one side without correction strokes or a light correction stroke and then just switch sides and then I'm getting a nice S curve and then on those inside and outside turns you're getting different direction and speed. Now something you would think is not part of this equation is the paddle. Last fall I switched, I tried this double blade paddle on a long solo trip for the first time, loved it and now I primarily use this for touring. 
but is affecting my catch rate with trolling. For one, I'm paddling on both sides. There's less S curving to my, my path now, but I think more importantly, I'm just paddling faster. Double blade is very efficient and fast, and I'm paddle, I paddle slower with this, and I think it's actually a more ideal trolling speed. If you're trolling too fast, A, it can ruin the action on a lure. A lure that has a lip on it can only be trolled up to a certain speed before it starts just going crazy or wobbling or just drags up to the surface and stops diving. But uh, yeah, with this, I paddle nice and a bit slower. It might be just a kilometer, an hour slower, half a kilometer even, but it seems to be making a difference and I'm noticing I'm catching less fish with a double plate paddle. One of the things I love the most about trolling is simply that on a long, let's say 10 hour day of paddling, it just breaks it up. It gives me a little sense of excitement all the time. Catch a fish, forces me to take a break, put down the paddle for a bit, a few minutes, and I think that's healthy mentally and physically. There are a lot of rod holders out there and I think choosing a good one will really make the difference for this approach. I love this Scotty rod holder. It is not cheap. I think uh, the two parts are something like 50 bucks. And you could probably walk into a department store and get one for under $10. It'd be cheap, flimsy, maybe a wire frame that hooks onto the gunnel in some rudimentary way. This thing is fantastic. Uh, it's, it's made in Canada. It's really good quality plastic. I beat the snot out of it. I, you wouldn't, you would think, how do you, how do you abuse something like this? Well, for one, I leave it on the gunnels attached when I portage, and I've accidentally smashed into trees, which is a fair amount of momentum actually. And it maybe bends back a little, but no worse for wear whatsoever. This thing is rock solid. I have no affiliation with Scotty whatsoever. Um, however, I do have the links to this in my Amazon storefront in the description below. If you're looking, they have a lot of pieces, Scotty. Different styles and forms of, of rod holders. If you want to get the exact ones that I have, which I recommend for this purpose, then they're in my Amazon storefront. And I have to emphasize, it's two pieces. If you go out and buy this, you're going to have nothing to mount with. Scotty has a, like a modular system. So this is the clamp mount that I use. It's perfect for gunnel mounting on a canoe. I've used it on pretty wide gunnels. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the maximum dimensions are, but unless you have gargantuan uh, gunnels, then you'll be fine with mounting with this. And then it's highly adjustable. There are three ways to adjust it. One on the rod holder, and then two on the clamp. This, pretend this is the gunnel. It's got a knob here, and this allows me to change the tilt, how, how far up I want it to be or far down. And consider, keep in mind, the higher your rod tip is, the higher your lure is in the water. So if you aim your rod kind of down, I usually hover mine just above the water, then your lure is going to dive deeper as well. And then it's got another piece in here, which allows you to control, to basically fan it out. So you just open that latch, and then this comes out, and you can tilt it in different ways, like that. And you may wonder, why would you want to do that? Well, you probably wouldn't if this is horizontal, like I have it. But if you want to steer this a little forward or a little backward, you can do that. If you're aiming it backward, it's uh, if a fish hits, it's going to rip your rod out of the holder. Um, so Scotty has thought of that, and they have a little rubber latch here that you can uh, stick in and secure over the rod to prevent that. However, I remove that. I don't aim it backward. Uh, I just don't like it for in the canoe. I think if you're in a big boat and had lots of room to negotiate with the rod, uh, that might be good. But uh, for me, I prefer just to be able to rip it out without having to open up a little rubber latch or pull it farther out this way to clear the rubber latch. And the third way you can adjust this is using this knob here. These have nice metal bolts, like they're very solid. They'll hold in place and never let go unless I unscrew it. And this one controls how much this rod holder tilts. So it's it's similar to this one. Both control the tilt but just at different points of how much you want to aim up or down. Another brilliant part of Scotty's design is this cup here. You might be wondering what that's for. It's so that it can accommodate a bait casting reel, a spinning reel. It holds like so. If this were a bait caster, unfortunately I don't have one with me, it would sit like this. Whoops and the bait caster would rest right in there. Low profile bait caster. 
Like I said, you don't need a lot of knowledge or experience with fishing to troll. It certainly helps knowing what kind of depths and species and seasons you're dealing with. But it's a chicken and the egg scenario. If you're not catching a lot of fish, you're never going to learn their movements and their seasonal patterns and, and what they like and when they like it. So trolling really helps to do that. You're, just by having your line in the water, you're eventually going to luck into some. And the more fish you catch, the more you're going to understand their behaviors. So if trolling isn't something you've given a lot of thought to before, I highly recommend picking one of these up for your next trip. It's going to keep your line in the water, and that alone, regardless of anything else, I guarantee will catch you more fish. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I just yanked it where the sun don't shine. Oh.